it's interesting that Dan uh, Carlin has been avoiding Hitler as well. Yeah. Uh, probably for this reason. I, probably for I this so. reason. Yeah. I mean, but it's it's complicated too right. because there's a pressure. That guy has his demons. I, lo I love Dan <laughs> so much. He's so this is the the I don't know if you feel this pressure. Yeah. But as a creative, he feels the pressure of being maybe not necessarily correct, but maybe correct in the in the sense that his understanding he gets to the bottom of uh of why something happened, of what really happened. Yeah. Get get to the bottom of it before he can say something publicly about mm -hmm. it, and he is uh, tortured by that burden. I know, it, you know, he takes so much shit from the historical community for no reason. I think he's the greatest popularizer, quote unquote, of history, and I wish more people in history understood it that way. He was an inspiration to me. I mean, I do some videos sometimes on my Instagram now where I'll like I'll do like a book tour. I'll be like, here's my bookshelf of these presidents. And like, here's what I learned from this book and this book and this. And that was very much like a a skill I learned from him of being like, as you know, as the historian writes. You know, you know, I love I just love the way he talks. He's like, in the mud. <laughs> or you know, he'll be like, quote. Unquote. Yeah. <laughs> I just I love he he inspires me, man. Like, yeah. He really does to like learn more and I've read, I bought a lot of books because of Dan Carlin. He'll be, you know, because of this guy, because of that guy. Um, in terms of, you know, another thing he does, which nobody else, and I'm probably guilty of this, he focuses on the actual people involved. Like he would tell the story of actual British soldiers ha yes. in World War One, mm -hmm. And I probably, and maybe you're guilty of this too, we over-focus on what was happening in the German general staff, what yes. was happening in the British general staff. And he yes. doesn't make that mistake. That's why he tells real history. Yeah, and and make, it gives it a feeling. The result is that there's a feeling. You get the feeling of what it was like to be there. Exactly. You know, you're becoming quickly becoming more and more popular. Uh, speaking about political issues, in part, do you feel a burden, like almost like uh, the the prison of your prior convictions? of having to uh, being popular with a certain kind of audience and thereby unable to really think outside the box. I had, I've, I've really struggled with this. I came up in right-wing media. I came up a much more doctrinaire conservative in my professional life. It wasn't always conservative. We can get to that later um, if you want. And I did feel an immense pressure after Jan after the election by people to say, wanted me to say the election was stolen. And I knew I had a sizable part of my audience. Oh, well, here's the benefit. Most people know me from Rising, which is with Crystal and me. That is inherently a left-right program. So it's a large audience. So I felt comfortable and I knew that I could still be fine in terms of my numbers, whatever, because a lot many people knew me who were on the left and if you know my right listeners abandoned me, so be it. Mm -hmm. I was had the luxury of able to take that choice, but I still felt an immense amount of pressure to say the election was stolen, to give credence to a lot of the stuff that Trump was doing, to downplay January sixth, to downplay many of the Republican senators or justify many of the Republican senators, some of whom I know who objected to the electoral college certification and who stoked some of the flames um, that have eaten the Republican base. And I just wouldn't do it. And that was hard, man. Like, I feel more politically homeless right now than I ever have. But I have realized in the last couple of months that it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It's freedom. It's true freedom. I now say, I say exactly what I think. And it's not that I wasn't doing that before. It's maybe... Um, I would avoid certain topics or like I would think about things more from a team perspective of like, am I making sure that it's it's I'm not saying I didn't fight it. And I still I criticize the right plenty and Trump plenty before the election and more. It's more just like I no longer feel as if I even have the illusion of a stake within the game. I'm mm -hmm. like, I only look at myself as an outside observer and I will only call it as I see it. Truly, and I, I was aspiring to that before, but I I had to have, in a way, Trump stopped the steal thing 
it like took my shackles off 100%. Yeah. Because I was like, no, this is bullshit. And I'm going to say it's bullshit. Yeah. And I think it's bad. And I think it's bad for the Republican Party. And if people in the Republican Party don't agree with me on that, that's fine. I'm just not going to be necessarily like associated with you anymore. This is probably one of the first political related, oh, really? politics related <laughs> conversations we've had. Uh, I mean, I, I, unless you count Michael Malice, who- He was great. Yeah. <laughs> I, he's a funny guy. He's not so much political as he is like burn it down, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> he, he leans too far in anarchy for me. Yeah, I, I think he's uh, there's a place for that. It's it's almost well. First of all, he's uh, he's working on a new book, which I really appreciate. Outside of the, he's working on like a, a big book for a while, which is White Pill. Mm -hmm. He's also w working on this like short little thing, which is uh, like anarchist um handbook or something like that yeah it's like anarchy for idiots or something <laughs> like that which uh i think is really need, but... <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well me yeah. being an idiot right. and being curious about anarchy is, right. seems useful so i like those kinds of books that's russian heritage man yeah they're anarchist 101 yeah i, I yeah. mean it's a uh i find those kinds of things a uh, useful thought experiment because uh, that's why I, I, it didn't, it's, it's frustrating to me when people talk about communism or socialism or even capitalism, mm -hmm. where they can't enjoy the thought experiment of like, why did uh, communism fail? And maybe ask the question of like, are there, is it possible to make communism succeed or are there good ideas in communism? Like I enjoy the thought experiment, like yeah. the, dis, the the discourse of it, like the the reasoning and like devil's advocate and all that. People have like, seem to not have patience for that. They're like, communism bad, red. <laughs>